This is Duke University. But uh, the Energy Data Analytics Lab is a recognition of a number of changes that are going on in the energy sector. And Richard Newell and Matthew Harding, the faculty co-directors of the Energy Data Analytics Lab, brought this idea together, recognizing that there are substantial changes that are happening um, with regards to energy data. So before we get into the energy data, one thing to think about, there are over 7.4 billion mobile devices and 7.3 billion people. There are now more mobile devices than there are people. This is reflective of the types of changes that are occurring in terms of the massive amounts of data that are becoming available. But this is not just happening in the personal electronics sector. Um, this is definitely happening in the smart grid sector, in a number of different other sectors out here. Think about, about smart meters and smart grids, first of all. By 2020, all Danish electric utilities will have smart metering installed in, uh, throughout, throughout the country. So th th this provides massive, massive quantities of data. There has been a 20-fold increase in smart meters since 2007 alone. Um, and as we're, we're looking at this, this is sort of on the consumer side, we're seeing these huge increases where we're measuring the end user of, uh, of, of electricity. But also on the supply side, the actual smart grid itself is having many, many more sensors deployed. There, you know, we look at the amount of data that's producing, smart meters are able to yield 2,880 times more data, going from a once per month sampling, where there was, used to be a, a physical flesh and blood person coming to read your meter every month, to those data being transmitted automatically to utilities on the order of once per 15 minutes, in some cases, in even finer intervals. So this um, amount of additional data is incredibly powerful. Um, on the smart grid side, on the larger grid, the sensors are being installed, phaser measurement units, otherwise known as PMUs. There, in 2010, there were only 200 PMUs that were installed um, across the grid. Now there are over 1,700 that have been installed. These provide extremely fine granularity data on voltage and current readings throughout the, uh, the grid and provide them 30 samples per second. So this is certainly much, much more sensitive data um, than, than was previously available. But smart grid data is not the only type of data that is starting to increase in magnitude, quantity, and frequency. We look at the Internet of Things and this concept of devices being interconnected and you have thermostats, companies like Nest, water heaters, companies like Aquanta, and lighting, companies like Enlighted, that are entering the market to provide extremely fine resolution data for, for systems that never before provided any amount of data. So, uh, you know, the Internet of Things is certainly another, another area of interest. Then there's the oil and gas industry. And you think about the amount of data and the diversity of data that is being presented through the oil and gas industry, where you have, um, you have data from seismic readings, three-dimensional um, data that allow uh, geophysicists to determine whether or not there, is, uh, there may be oil or gas below the, the surface. And you have varieties of data with images from uh, drilling sites, from video of fluid flow, and texts from drillers' logs, different types of data that are being, being pro brought forward there. So the Energy Data Analytics Lab is a recognition of this change. We, we have systems, and this is kind of a modified version of our, uh, of our uh, flyer for the Energy Data Analytics Lab. We have systems here that are providing new sources of energy data, we're taking those data and th th those may become coming from diverse sources, from open source data sets that are available online, from real-time streams of data, from sensors, from um, government sources. 
and applying advanced machine learning statistics and data mining tools to create changes in energy systems, to improve energy efficiency, to reduce environmental impacts, and to reduce costs. I'm trying to find ways of improving the systems there. So we're very interested in partnering with all of you on how we can further investigate these sources of data, leverage the immense resources of Duke University um, and its potential partners and external organizations to address interesting problems with interesting data sets. So, you know, what types of things are we interested in? Well, of course, big data is one that, you know, is coming up more and more these days, but, but what, what is big data? Um, you know, big data is anything that, can, that cannot be handled by traditional methods. There is a number of reasons why that might be the case. So we look at volume, the pure quantity of existing data. This could be, you know, we're talking about examples of seismic data. You could have terabytes and terabytes of data that need to be analyzed in some interesting way, but perhaps it's the sheer quantity that's being the barrier. Maybe it's velocity. Is it streaming data? Are these data that might be real-time data coming from smart meters or from PMUs? Is it variety? It could be data in many forms. You might have both text, numerical data, and imagery data, video data, types of data that are informative and you can perhaps get insight from, but may not be in a traditional format that is immediately integrable with one another that could be easily re uh, recognized by traditional tools. And veracity, this, this one is becoming more and more of an issue as we start to consider data sources from things like social media, which may be quite informative about certain economic changes, about certain social uh, events that are going on in, in society. And sources like Twitter and, and whatnot, you know, I was at a, uh, the energy conference in Raleigh the other, the other day, and after their keynote address, the first thing that they said was, make sure you tweet to this hashtag. And so we're starting off our, our conferences, our, our convenings, with make sure we're, we have a stream of data that's going to come out of this that we can access so that we can get artifacts from these experiences. So the veracity is something that we'll have to deal with, and that certainly requires some non-traditional methods. And then what types of analytics can we then perform on this? Um, as we're, we're going through this, there are three sort of areas that are emerging, descriptive analytics, what has happened? What's the baseline? Trying to find a way of, of kind of putting that into perspective. Predictive analytics, what could happen? H how could we forecast what's going to happen next? Um, and this, of course, comes into forecasting modeling and many statistical tools being required for that. And prescriptive analytics, what should happen? How do you help to create um, beneficial decisions for society through policy um, and through through informing businesses. Um, so we, ha we have these, and of course, all this has to be put in the context that there are certain concerns that, that we want to you know, conduct our research with respect to data ownership, access, security, privacy, and transparency of use. And all these things when it comes to collections of personal data are, are certainly Im important issues that need to be addressed in, in considering these issues. So, um, there are a number of projects that the lab is currently uh, engaged with. We're hoping to grow this and we're hoping to uh, partner with, with all of you in, in making that happen. Um, a, a few of these in orange we'll be talking about shortly. You'll be hearing from these excellent panelists on, on these topics. Um, a few other projects that are going on uh, in, involving smart meter building data analytics, non-intrusive load monitoring. That's a topic I had spoken on last year at this conference. Um, energy system failure prediction. Uh, that is actually a project that's going to be working with Information Initiative and uh, folks in Robert Calderbank's group on uh, looking at how to predict failures in systems such as Ice Energy's Ice Bear Unit, which is one uh, partner that we've uh, recently been working with, and economic noun casting of energy systems, looking at how we can use these massive data sets to start to figure out what, um, what the current state of the system is giving near recent data or, uh, or data from the, from the past. So uh, with all that said, um, you know, keep in mind what types of, of opportunities you might have in your research and your work that might connect 
you know, that's one of the functions of the Energy Data Analytics Lab. And one short plug I'll put in is that we're also, uh, we'll be hiring a postdoc in the, the near future. And so if any of you are aware of, of an individual who might uh, like to work with us on, on some of these projects, please let us know. Um, and with that, I'd like to open it up to questions.